Sean Mice here for our faith-based training today. And I have titled today's training, Your Responsibility to Achieve. But before we get into the faith-based training, I want to share with you some thoughts. Uh, I want to apologize to those of you that have come to rely is the wrong word, but you, you get value from the faith-based training on a weekly basis. And I, I talked with you about this late, la late last year, and I asked some of you to pray. I gave the devil more credit than I should have. I said, you know, the enemy has just really been working against me on doing this faith-based call. And, uh, you know, I kind of blamed the enemy that I wasn't making this a priority. And I asked some of you to pray. And, uh, well, nothing really happened. And, you know, they say faith without works is dead. And the fact of the matter is, I blame the enemy for something that's my responsibility. It's my responsibility to hold this call every week. And so uh, I'm taking responsibility for holding it today. And I'm taking responsibility for scheduling it for next week. Now, we may move this to another day. I'm not sure how that will work. But I'm back. I'm back with faith-based calls. I'm back. And uh, so for those of you that count on these, you can count on me. I'm going to take this time to the Lord because I want to share with you some thoughts, some ideas about achievement, and I, I, I'm going to use a, a very particular text in the Word that may seem strange. It, it may feel like it's not congruent. It, it may feel like, why? Why? Why would I use this text for this? It's going to open some questions, but I think that for some of you, it's going to have you recognizing and realizing, for some of you, I think it's going to have you recognizing and realizing that you do have a responsibility to go to the next level. You have a responsibility, and if you do anything less than that, then, then you're not living up to your responsibility. Okay? It's kind of like if you have children, and, and you assign Johnny takes the trash out, and Franny does the dishes, and, and somebody else vacuums. And if they don't do their part, they are lacking in responsibility. Well, if you're a Christian, you are a part of a family, a community of, of all of the other Christians. So you're, you're not just a part of the church that you go to. You're not just part of your family. You're not just part of the people that are in your Bible study. But you're part of the family of God, right? Think about that. You're part of the family of God. And the family of God has responsibilities. You know, Paul talked about it in, in Corinthians, and I'm not going to pull up the passage, but Paul talked about it in Corinthians where he talks about this idea that, that the body is made up of different parts. Like some of us are a toe, and some of us are a liver, and some of us are a kidney, and some of us are an ear. And the fact of the matter is, Paul talked about this. He said, look, if the ear doesn't do his part, then the body can't hear, and if the foot doesn't do his part, then the body can't stand up. But the fact of the matter is you're part of a body, but if you're not doing your part, the rest of the body can't stand up. But it's dereliction of duty. You say, yeah, I'll follow you, Jesus. Oh, but I'm not going to do the chores. That's a dereliction of duty. So before I get much deeper into this, I'm going to take this to the Lord in prayer. Father, I, I come before you right now. I thank you for reinvigorating in me the responsibility to do this and to stop blaming the enemy that I'm not because the enemy can't make me do anything. I have a responsibility to do what you've powered me to do. You tell us in Romans that your power is inside of me, and it is time for me to take your power and activate. And so, Father, I thank you for giving me the boldness to do it today. I may not have the words right today, but I ask that you will flow through me today in touching people's lives God, that you would speak through me, that I would not take responsibility for what I'm saying, but that, that I would take responsibility for being a conduit. God, that you would open up ears, that what I'm going to share will not offend unless that's what you want, but that it will motivate folks to take action much as you're motivating me to take action. We pray in the name of Christ, thankfully. Amen. Here's the thing. I just really believe what I just shared with you. I really do. I believe that every one of us has a part, that God has given us a part. The Word tells us that He gives gifts to each one of us severally as He will. If He's given a gift to you and you aren't using it, 
How does it make you feel when you, you buy your friend a gift, you buy her a new blouse and she never wears it? If you know it fits, but she never wears it. She doesn't like the color or something. She never wears it. I'm gonna tell a secret on my wife. She's not here today, so I can tell secrets, right? A lot of times I tell secrets on this call and then I tell her my secrets later. But I'm gonna tell a secret on my wife. My wife has a whole bunch of clothes, many of which were given to her by various friends. Well, when I look in my wife's closet, of which I have a tiny little, I have one rod in, in her closet, right? I'm trying to be funny. Maybe this isn't the place to be. So I don't know where the clothes came from. And she's got clothes in there two years old that still have the tag on. And I have to watch myself because that's disturbing to me. She knows that. But sometimes she'll wear a blouse that she's never worn before. And we're going to dinner with someone we haven't seen in six months. And, and I say, that's a beautiful blouse. Where did you get it? And she'll tell me that the person whose dinner we're going to go to tonight gave it to her. But what does that do for the person that gave it to her, right? What does that do for her? I don't have to explain this to you. And here's, here's the thing. If God has given you a gift and you don't use it, what does that say to God? Right? I mean, some of you have a gift for helping people lose weight. But, but you're like that light on a hill that Jesus talked about that has a bushel on top of it. How many of you are begging God to do something new in your life? How many are, are you asking God to do something new in your life? Like you're asking him to give you some new direction. Come on, come on, be honest. Are you, are you asking God in your prayer time to do something new for you? Will you help me with this? Will you help us with this? Will you help us obtain this? Will you, will you heal this? Will you do this? But let me ask you this. Have you done with whatever he gave you a year ago, what he gave to you to do? Is it possible that your current prayers are being blocked because you're not doing what he already gave you to do? Is it possible? I know. Well, no is too strong of a word, probably. If I was more bold, I'd use the word no. But I, I deeply believe that there are some things in my life that I'm praying for that are being blocked because I have not done the last couple things he's given me to do. I've started them, but haven't done them. Is that the case with you? Now, it's not easy because we have to carve out time. I mean, just like this faith-based call, this, this faith-based call, God gave me this to do several years ago. And there should be no excuse for me not doing this call one week unless I'm not working. If I'm on vacation that week, right? But I don't do this call every week. But I'm still asking God for new blessings. Have you ever given your children a gift? They ask for a gift. You give them a gift and they play with it for one day and it goes in their toy box. And then tomorrow they start asking for a new gift. Are you going to give them the new gift if they don't start playing with the one you just gave them yesterday? Probably not. Probably not. If you're a good parent, you're probably not going to. We have a responsibility to achieve with the gifts that he's given us. And, and I'll tell you, this, this just comes home. I don't know if this is Lord or what, but I just feel compelled to say this. You got me on a, on a day. You got me on a day. I'm just going to share this with you. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. But some of you are not doing in your business what God wants you to do. God has given you business ideas but you're making all kinds of excuses for why you can't do it. I see them all the time. 
Clients write me excuses in emails all day long and I just ignore them because if I, if I call them on it, then, then I have to spend like 30 minutes it, it, it backpedaling and telling them why I don't think that they're an ugly person. I mean, people just get so offended when I call them on the fact that they didn't do the work they were given last week. And that's outside the scope of what I'm sharing today. But the fact of the matter is that God has given you a business mission. You're here. You were here on my previous call to learn how to do it. But some of you are so caught up in learning that you're just not doing. You're not going out and getting subscribers. You're not going out. I, I've got clients. And I, can't, I, I can't say, I, I want to be very careful exactly the words that I use, but I, I believe it was earlier this year that I instructed some clients to essentially do a YouTube video every single day. And the average client's done like three in the last 300 days. I mean, that's nowhere near even trying. And then they want to know, why don't I have more traffic? Well, because you're not doing anything to get traffic. You're worrying about traffic. You're dreaming about traffic. You're reading about traffic. But you're not doing anything to invite people to your website. Of course, you're not going to have traffic, right? Of course, you're not going to have traffic. You have a responsibility to achieve you have a responsibility to go out. So here's the verse. I told you I was going to give you a verse today that's going to be contradictory for you. It, it, it's, going to, it's going to feel incongruent. It's going to open up a whole new can of words. We're just going to talk about it. We're going to unpack this verse. He alone is immortal and dwells in unapproachable light. Okay, so this is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 18. 1 Timothy 6, 16 through 18. He alone, who is that? God alone is immortal and dwells in unapproachable light. No one has ever seen him, nor can anyone see him, to him be honoring eternal glory. Amen. Dominion. Amen. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but in God, who richly provides all things for us to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, and to be generous and ready to share. You know how many people come to me and ask me if it's okay to make money online? Like, is it Christian to make money online? Well, I don't know. What does this say? Instruct those who are rich in this present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but in God who richly provides all things for us to enjoy. So if you are putting your hope in uncertain wealth, then I would say that you are wrong to get rich online, right? But does this say instruct those who are rich in the present age to sell everything that you have and go become poor? No, it does not. Why? Notice that verse 18 says, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, and to be generous and ready to share. Let me ask you this. If you're poor as a church mouse, how generous can you be? If we could talk all day long about a poor widow that, that feeds like one orphan boy every night, and that's a wonderful thing, right? But what if that poor widow was rich and could feed a thousand orphan boys, right? Now think about you. Think about you. You're generous, right? You give people your old shoes before they're totally worn out. You see a homeless person on the street and you take them to McDonald's, right? You do that. But what if you were to really dig in in the next year online and get rich? What could you do to help the world? Could you do good? Could you be rich in good works? Could you be generous and ready to share? Look, I'm going to say something that to some people, you're, you're, you're going to disagree. But I think if you disagree, you should stop trying to make money online. God doesn't want you poor. God wants you rich. Why? So that you can be generous and ready to share. Have you ever gone to your church 
and they say, hey, if anybody wants to go on a missions trip down to Mexico, and we're going to build a new church in Mexico, or in Guatemala, or anywhere else, we're going to build a new church. It's going to cost $50,000 to build the new church, so that 100 people can have a church. And we're going to take 100 people. In order to go, you have to come up with $5,000. And have you ever thought, well, I don't really have the time to go, but I wish I could go. But have you ever thought about the fact that there are people in the audience that have the time to go down there but don't have the money? What if you were rich and you could offer a scholarship to anybody that wanted to go help? on that missions trip, they would just have to go, you'd pay for it. You remember when Paul was asking for, for Paul, Paul was asking, um, I'm not sure if it was the Philippians, he, he was asking to raise money for one of the churches. And he was talking about this idea that if you give, that it'll be credited to your account. Do you ever wish that you had more time to go on missions trips? What if you had the money to help somebody else go? You can't do it if you're poor. And I'm going to come, I'm going to deviate from my script right now. I don't have a script, but I'm going to deviate. I'm going to deviate for just a moment. Some of you are so caught up wasting your time watching what other people are doing on Facebook, reading emails, buying all kinds of training programs you're never going to study. You are so caught up. You're wasting four to six hours a day on learning stuff you don't even need to know instead of just building your business. We are in a time in the coaching industry right now that's like none other before. People are desperate to learn how to start coaching businesses. You know how, and you're not teaching them. So I told you I was going to deviate. I want to come back to this. Those Instruct those that are rich in this present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but in God, who richly provides all things for us. To, you see a lot of people, they, 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 they grab onto this. Well, if you're rich, don't be conceited. And don't put your hope in uncertainty of wealth. And, and they take that to this place of saying, don't be wealthy. But what this is saying is, Paul writing to Timothy, what this is saying is, if you're rich, don't be conceited. Don't put your hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but put your hope in God who richly provides all things for us to enjoy. God wants you to have all things to enjoy, but you've got to reach out and, 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 and you're not going to get it if you spend four to six hours a day wasting your time. But if you spend four to six hours a day building a rock solid, genuine business, inviting people to come to your website where people can purchase your training program or become a client and you're able to be rich, then you are now able to be good. You're able to be rich in good works. You can be generous and you can be ready to share. And folks, I just believe very strongly that you have a responsibility to take the gifts that God has already placed inside of you. You see, if, if you've been studying from me for very long, you have received the gift of knowing how to do webinars. You've received the gift of knowing how to enroll folks in coaching. You've received the gift of knowing how to get visitors from, from uh, LinkedIn, from YouTube, from Facebook, from interviews, from podcasts. You have learned how to share the gift that's inside of you with millions of people around the world on an amazing platform called the internet. You've learned all of those things, and they are effectively a gift from God. God has given you the gift of knowing how to change millions of lives through the time you've spent with me and with other people online. God has given you that gift. 
Do you remember the story of the talents? You remember the parable of the talents? Jesus said that, that uh, the, the, the rich man gave one guy 10 talents, one guy five talents, and one guy one. And the guy that had 10, he went out and he, he invested and he got 10 back. The guy that had five, he invested, he got five back. The guy that had one, he hid it in the ground. And what did Jesus say about that person? He said something to the effect of, you lousy and worthless servant. But here's the thing. You have been given amazing talents this year just in my coaching program, not counting everywhere else that you've been. Everything that you've studied online, everything that you've studied everywhere, you have been given amazing gifts. But if you don't put it out there and start changing lives and start selling it and start talking to people and start inviting people to your website and start using Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube or interviews or podcasts or somewhere to invite people to your website so their life can be changed, you're just like that lousy, worthless servant who hid his talent in the ground. And I know I'm being a little harsh today. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because there's one person here that needs to hear this this way. I tend to be really nice. I tend to pat people on the back and say, oh, you did a wonderful job. Oh, what a wonderful job, Johnny. What a wonderful job. The fact of the matter is, I've been patting some of you on the back for the last nine months telling you you've been doing a wonderful job, but you're just not doing enough. And I don't want to go to my grave knowing that I did not push you hard enough because I was too nice. All right? And so you're getting to see me in rare form today. I'm pushing a little because it is time. There is time left in this year for you to change lives and get paid for it. And I, I desperately believe that you have a responsibility to achieve so that you can be rich in good works, so that you can be generous and ready to share. I believe this deep down in my heart. I believe this deep down in my soul that you can get out there and change lives. I desperately believe that. But what you're doing now isn't working to change enough lives. Like something inside of you has to say, I'm gonna work for more than 10 hours a week. That this is a real business and I am determined to work more than 10 hours a week. I am determined to do whatever it takes to change lives. I'm gonna, I am determined to do whatever it takes with this gift that's been placed inside of me. Because God has placed inside of you a gift of knowledge that most people don't know. You know more about changing lives using the coaching model than almost anybody else on earth. You know more about changing lives with the coaching model than almost anybody else on earth. And that means you have a greater responsibility for changing lives than almost anybody else on earth. And I'm, I'm going to stop right there. And I don't know how much of this was the Lord today and how much of this was me, but you know what the truth of the matter is? Take what you will and do something with it. Father, I come before you in the name of Christ and Nazareth, and, and, and Father, I'm just, I'm not sure that I delivered the message that you wanted me to give today. I, I believe that some of what I, I shared today that you gave me, but, but God, I think it all meshes in there together, that you've given me the insight to be able to see some things. And, and you know, God, I always backpedal. I always backpedal just a little bit when I get harsh because I feel like that's not the Christian way. I, I feel like that I should be nicer than that. But God, I just felt riled up today that there was somebody hearing the sound of my voice that just needed a, a, swift, a swift get back in the game, brother. And so, Father, I just ask that for anybody that took whatever I said wrongly, that you would that you change, that, that you'd shift their mindset. Father, that, that everybody here would go to you and ask you what to take out of what has been shared today. That this isn't about me, that this isn't about my words, but that this is about you for them, that your message for them. And Father, I just ask that for everybody here, that every single person, when we get off the call, that the very first thing that they do, that they'll spend two minutes with you and they'll say, Lord, what do you want me to do next? Father, I pray in Christ's name, thankfully, amen. And, and folks, I say that with all sincerity. You don't need to take a word of anything that I've said to have any meaning. But I would say this, 
get on your knees with the Father for just five minutes and say, Lord, what part of what Sean shared today, if any, should I take to heart? All right? So you, you don't have a responsibility or a right to get offended at anything that I said, unless when you sit down with the Lord for five minutes, he says, hey, hey, Marion, you should really be offended at Sean. I don't think he's going to say that, but hey, if he does, I'll take it, right? But if you don't go to the Lord and say, Lord, what, what do you want me to get out of this? You don't have any right to be offended. But I also would say that if you don't take five minutes and say, Lord, what do you want me to draw out of this? And then go do it. And then go do it. Remember, faith without works is dead. You can believe all day. You can hope all day. You can pray all day. You can, you can do all of those things. But if you don't take action, nothing's going to happen. The Bible tells us faith without works is dead. You can pray for poor people all day long, but if you don't go feed them your prayers, I don't know, go read James. You can figure it out for yourself. I just believe very strongly it is our responsibility to act. It is your responsibility to act. And I may have shared with you some things you didn't want to hear today. I may have shared with you some things the Lord didn't want you to hear today. I may have shared with you some things that are pushing the envelope a little bit. You write it all off if you want, but go to the Lord for five minutes and ask him, what do you want me to take out of this?